So just a little bit of my background. My husband and I both commute into the city. We have two little girls. Um, they're not in school, so childcare. We have to figure that out. Um, and so when we moved in in July 2014, I was eight months pregnant, super, super pregnant. I was, I was commuting in, um, took my maternity leave, and then in January 2014, we, we got right on the waiting list the minute we closed on our house. Uh, we were number 64 on the waiting list. Um, and we had to, I had to wake up at 6.15 every day. I had to wake up before 6.15, leave the house by 6.10 every day, leave sleeping children, um, like many families do, just to get a spot, because in the winter in January, you can't walk to the train station. I'm, I'm 0.8 miles away. I do it in the spring, I do it in the summer, and I do it in the fall, but in the dead of winter, it's way too dangerous. It's hills and it's ice. Um, and so, you know, over over time, you know, we would email, and so in June 2015, we were number 55, in January 2016, uh, we were 46, so that's 18 spots, according to our count, that, that we're given out. Um, and now we stand at number 32, so if that number, we were, that number holds, it's going to be about four plus years on the waiting list. Um, and our sheet of paper that I still have when we came to the town says that it was 1.5 years. So I know that's been adjusted and, and, you know, it is what it is. But I just wanted to speak about the hardship that this places on a lot of borough residents um, that have, um, you know, there's not a lot of options for child care here that start that early. Um, I take it on the days that, uh, you know, so I stop going at 6.15 because I'm not going to not see my kids. I take an Uber one time, I paid $18 for 0.8 miles to go to the train station because, you know, you have no choice. You have to get to the train. You need to make a train. You have meetings. Um, I'm very lucky. I'm a very flexible kind of um, situation at my job. Uh, but it, it's a race. My husband tried to go there before and then gone to Summit and gotten, uh, you know, knocked out of Summit where they have some sort of ballet system going, come back and walk to the train. Um, so, you know, I think that this situation isn't to be taken lightly in, in terms of the way that it's affecting you know, people's, people's ability to live the life that they wanted to live when they came here, that they want to see their children, that they want to um, you know, see them in the morning, not go to work when it's dark, and get back when it's dark just to not be able to, to park at the train. I mean, now, um, it, it's, it's a hardship, and I know a lot of families that couldn't be here tonight are also you know, that's why we're, everyone is complaining because of this. It's, it's not because of, for me, it's not because of township or, I don't care, the lottery system. I would say that this is people's livelihoods we're dealing with. You, you can't go from year to year not knowing what your situation is going to be. One year knowing that you can, you can have child care an hour and a half later because you have a permit and the next year not knowing.